Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. Super fun topic today. I'm really excited. This is one of my favorites, biohacking and the surprising connection to trauma, which is really, really fun and fascinating. When I first heard this connection, I was like, yes, this makes so much sense. Finally, another one of those uh, passions of mine are tied into what I do every day, what I love. And so if you are a follower of this um, channel and, and part of this community, part of our soul family, by the way, we are a soul family. So please make sure you subscribe. That helps to strengthen our connection and draw us closer to each other. Totally off topic. But um, what I wanted to talk to you today is about biohacking and the relationship to trauma. So it is very fascinating that, and I think what I was trying to get to that I kind of distracted myself from here by that beep, um, was that when we are in search of our life purpose, we can get very confused. We can feel like I have all these different passions and interests and I don't know which one to choose, or maybe even because of trauma, you may have forgotten what your passions were, what it lights you up. And so as we go through this process of trying to identify our life purpose, identify the value and the worth that we have to, to offer to the world, we can get a little confused because we feel like I have, I've got this interest in biohacking, this interest in fitness, this interest in psychology, this interest in um, creation and making things like videos and, and written content. How does that all come together? And we can never figure it out from the level of the brain. Thinking about it will never... I make the, the roadmap clear. We'll never get the five-year roadmap or, or the, the, the checklist with all the next steps. The only way to figure it out is to play and to, to dabble and to, um, to, to experience daily life in, in following your, your, um, your intuition, your guidance, and seeing where that leads you and seeing how things to come together. So I'm really excited because of course, if we're multi-passionate, we can't pursue all those passions at once. We have to choose one so that we are as strong as a labor laser instead of diffused like a light bulb. So when the, the pieces start coming together, it feels really good. I always use the analogy of soup that we're going to add a little of this, add a little of that, taste it, let it marinate, see how it feels the next day. Maybe it's too salty. Maybe we add a little bit more water, that it's a constant process of mixing together the ingredients of your passions and interests and the things that call your heart, that your intuition leads you to. So for me, you know, having these these interests that are very seemingly different um, to watch them come together is super fascinating and fun. So what does trauma have to do with biohacking? So first of all, what is biohacking? If you're not familiar, most people generally understand that it means hacking the biology, right? That we're trying to understand this physical vehicle that we have been given and learn how to maximize it, how to get the most out of it, how to be the most productive, how to have the best energy, how to, to feel good, how to feel happy, how to feel uh, motivated uh, instead of allowing the, the body to sort of I don't want to say disintegrate, that's the word that came to mind, but really to, to fall into a lackadaisical habit, right? That if we are, you know, stuck in perpetual healing mode, we can often get um, lazy and I literally not just um, physic or mentally lazy, but physically lazy, that muscles atrophy, right? If we don't work out our muscles, they're going to get a little bit weaker. And so, you know, biohacking is, is sort of exercising the muscle of your biology every day in every possible way, that there are many different aspects of your body that serve different functions that can be optimized to serve you as best as possible. I really, really love um, the, the Greeks because they would always talk about how y you have missed out on something if you haven't learned to maximize your physical vehicle that there is an understanding that in order to achieve happiness there is a discipline a physical discipline that is necessary and and even you know in biblical times they would talk about discipline disciplining the body or you know keeping the flesh under control um in in, in every great religion and there is reference to the need for uh, a form of self-love which is self-discipline um, we understand in psychology from a, uh, a gut and microbiome perspective, even a, a, a biology or a medical perspective, that the, 
the physicality, the way we feel our happiness is directly connected to um, the, um, the optimized physical being, our, our physical health. Um, so I could go on and on about that forever. Honestly, if I didn't choose coaching, psychology, trauma, healing as a path and life purpose because of that, um, I likely would have chosen some sort of physical um, passion and interest, whether it's fitness or health or nutrition or biohacking. They're kind of all um, very closely related and, and serve each other. So obviously you can see I'm very passionate about this and excited how the two come together. So if you look at just the definition of biohacking, uh, biohacking your body means changing your chemistry and your physiology through the science and self-experimentation to increase energy and vitality. Now, sort of underlying in that definition there is in the biohacking community a desire to to live a long and healthy life not just to live a long life but to live a healthy life and not just to live a healthy life but to live a long life and so there is something in the dna sequence called a telomere that is necessary for the reproduction of new cells as we reproduce new chromosomes um, so let me read this so I don't get it wrong. A telomere pr protects the ends of the chromosomes from becoming frayed or entangled. Each time a cell divides, the telomere becomes slightly shorter. Eventually, they become so short that the cell can no longer divide successfully, and that means that cell dies. So essentially what that explains is the process of aging, that our cells need to continue to re regenerate. And, and every time they regenerate, that telomere at the end of the DNA sequence gets a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter. And then when it is uh, basically gone, when it has been used up, when there is no more telomere, there is no more cell division, there is no more regeneration, there is decline and aging and death. So a little bit more details here so you can kind of understand how this all comes together. The DNA wakes up all of the cells in our body. It is the genetic material that makes us who we are. Every organ in our body, skin, liver, heart, etc., is made up of cells. So telomeres are vital to our health. Our cells replenish by copying themselves. This happens constantly throughout the body and through our lives. Telomeres get shorter each time they are copied, but it is important for the DNA to stay intact. So that's how the, the telomere just sort of brings along the DNA information to the next cell. Eventually the telomeres get too short and they can no longer do their job. And that is aging, right? So I realized a little bit of that was a repetitive, but necessary. So many people say, how do I lengthen my telomeres naturally? Well, you can usually do that through food. So think about the environment, the chemistry in your body. If you look at epigenetics, the chemistry in your body is determined by, um, sorry, I'm saying that wrong. The environment is responsible for turning on or off genes. So epigenetics explains to us that the gene, you may be born with, um, well, there is no cancer gene. That's kind of what came to mind. But um, you may be born with, let's say, the Alzheimer's gene, right? And the environment of your body is responsible for whether or not that gene is activated or turned off. Now, what determines the environment in your body? It is food, but it is also your mental state. Your neuropathways, your dendrites create the chemistry in your body. Um, if you have a negative thought, you are flooded with stress hormones. If you have a positive thought, you are flooded with happy hormones. Stress hormones are acidic. Happy hormones are alkaline. Acid, right, is degrading the body, is declining your health. It is leading to dis-ease versus the happy hormones, which lead to an alkaline state which lead to um, healing growth repair rest digest things of that nature so um, how can we how can we lengthen the uh, telomeres naturally one is through food and two is through your mental state this is where trauma comes in so the food if you want to know because i also am a, a big advocate of nutrition because they're all connected um, legumes nuts seeds fruits i am a big big advocate of fruit i am a big proponent of the garden of eden diet if you think about what did they have before they had forks and knives and spoons and shovels and fire they had fruit that fell from the tree so fruit i would highlight is probably the number one most important in this conversation um, interestingly enough i don't have the science to prove this they recommend dairy products and even coffee i personally having experienced a lot of trauma in my life have felt um, a 
oh, I guess you would say a decline in my ability to maintain the energy the way that you naturally should be. And coffee actually drains the adrenals, which amplifies that problem. So if you felt that you were in hypervigilance for a long period of time, if you felt that you were um, you know, constantly walking on eggshells or always feeling on edge, your adrenals will become fatigued. Although that's not a technical term, um, there is physical evidence of feeling constantly tired after living in a hypervigilant state. So for me personally, or someone who has experienced trauma, I don't recommend coffee. Coffee, especially in high amounts, um, maybe a decaf coffee or a black tea or a green tea can be fine. Um, I, I like my green tea um, for antioxidant purposes, but the the adrenals become um, exacerbated when they are constantly being flooded with these things that cause us to create more um, stress hormones in the body um, stress hormones so when you feel that pick me up from coffee it is a little bit of adrenaline and that can be very fatiguing for the body so i digress we'll get back on topic here the things that uh, shorten the telomeres from a nutritional standpoint are alcohol number one first and foremost the worst for your body your brain everything all around red meat and processed meats so that again comes from the biohacking community i'm not responsible or liable for that information um, that is just sort of the high level um, recommendations on how to lengthen or yes lengthen your life lengthen your telomeres so where does trauma come in after now that you have all of that information trauma comes in through the mental state so the other factor of your internal environment so the brain is the great chemist of the body the brain is in charge of the chemistry that is released into the body, the hormonal state. The hormones that are released under extreme states of stress or long sustained periods of trauma, of course, are stress hormones. So they are creating that acidic, acidic environment. They are causing um, <laughs> oxidative cell damage. And so that means that the cells have to be replenished more quickly, which means the telomeres are shortening, fa shortening faster, which leads to a shorter life. Not to mention the dis-ease that is called for, uh, caused by the acidic environment from all of the stress and the, the stress hormones that are released into the body. So yet another reason that we need to spread the word about complex trauma. Now, if you're new to this channel, I'll sort of give you a, a brief overview. What is complex trauma? Complex trauma, I believe personally, is something that we have all experienced, that we um, as a human being have uh, to deal with. It is part of the human condition that we need to learn how to process re and release trauma so that we can live longer, happier, more productive lives and fully self-actualize. And that really truly is my purpose is to get you to step into your purpose because everyone is made perfectly imperfect for a purpose. You have value and it, and it, that's interesting. You have value and worth. The acronym VIBE stands for value and intention based education. And so the the world's challenges that we see today, all of the depression, all of the anxiety, all of the unhappiness, all of the aggression, all of the war, all of the anger, all of the negativity is driven by this belief that we are not enough, which comes from complex trauma. So if you did not feel safe, seen, heard, cared for, or loved for an extended period of time, you developed what I like to call the unworthiness wound. And it is kind of like a floppy disk inserted into your limbic brain. It becomes the program that you operate on. It will override your intelligent brain every day, all day long. So if your brain believes that a certain circumstance or situation is not safe for you, it will cause you to self-sabotage or shrink back or fall away from that very thing that's going to move you towards your purpose, towards your dreams, towards abundance, towards freedom, towards whatever it is that you desire. Now you can have your heart's desire. You can have it all. They like to tell us that we should just be satisfied with what we have. But the truth is we are not meant to live this life that they tell us they should. They should all over us. So if you have an interest in biohacking, if you have an interest in living a longer life, if you have an interest in just being happy, if you want to be alive, if you want to grow, if you want to live your purpose, realize your dreams, get to know complex trauma, understand 
how it impacts your body. Check out all my videos. I have you know plenty of videos on how does complex trauma show up in your life, how to heal complex trauma. The number one most important key is brain spotting. I have videos on how to do brain spotting for yourself, how to um, experience it or what you will experience when you experience it. Otherwise, I do offer a free 30-minute session if you would like to experience that with me. Certainly my coaching and courses all target how to heal the trauma so you can step into your life purpose and make a living doing it because if you are here and you have a inkling you might come back you are part of this soul family you are part of the new earth construction team heaven is not this thing that's far away that it is here now and it is up to us to create and up to us to build and you are a critical piece of that team we are like a puzzle we all of our parts fit together. We need you. We can't complete the puzzle without you. So please come to the other side. It's really awesome and amazing over here. There is so much joy, so much bliss, so much freedom available to you. If you are just willing to show up, click that button, schedule the free call, jump on a call with me, and I promise you in 30 minutes or less, I can help you identify the root cause of your limiting beliefs, your financial blocks, uh, your unworthiness wound, or your complex trauma. All right. With that, I will close. I love you guys very, very much. I truly, truly, truly do love you. That is my gift. That is what I'm here for is to hold space for you, to nurture you, love you, be the, uh, the bumpers on your bowling alley as you drive towards your purpose. And we will make sure that it happens together because we are truly in this together. All right. I love you guys. I will see you on the next video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Even just a little emoji comment is extremely helpful for the YouTube algorithm. If you watch my videos, you know that's really hard to say. <laughs> uh, make sure you click this button here to subscribe. Otherwise, this button uh, for a video that is curated just for you. All right. Take care, my friends. Namaste, and I love you.